November 22, 1996, Tampa, Florida. Marco Antonio Barrera, the 122-pound world champion, faced challenger Junior Jones. The previously unbeaten Barrera was in for a rude awakening. That's right-handed Junior Jones ran. Another one. Redemption or repeat. Also, you'll see Ike Cortez. The glory in the 147-pound division may belong right now to Oscar De La Hoya, but watch out for Cortez. He'll try to show you tonight why he could be the top welterweight in the world. from Las Vegas, Nevada, just days after Oscar De La Hoya's controversial decision over Brunel Whitaker. The grittier side of boxing. Welterweight champion Ike Quarte takes on Ralph Tiger Jones. Then the rematch you may well have been waiting for, Junior Jones against Marco Antonio Barrera. 12 rounds of boxing, two confident warriors in each case. We're at the Las Vegas Hilton, which itself is making a comeback of sorts into the boxing world. Tonight, Marco Antonio Barrera seeks to avenge his devastating loss of last November. In that fight, challenger Junior Jones surprised the boxing world, including Barrera, by mixing it up inside more than expected and winning a battle of traded punches. Will it be another slugfest or a more tactical fight this time? We will soon find out. Right now, we take a look at the tail of the tape for Ike Quarte and Ralph Tiger Jones. And you can see that they're both 27 years old. Jones actually with a one-inch height advantage. Look at the difference in their weights tonight getting into the ring. Quarte has gained 14 and a half pounds since weighing in yesterday. He says because he allowed himself to eat the good African food that he's been avoiding in training for the fight. Four-inch reach advantage for Tiger Jones, but it'll be interesting to see if he can hold off the aggressive left jab of Ike Quarte. Punch that numbers, Larry. Take a look and see how active these fighters are, but they're similar, but the numbers don't mean a whole lot because of the dis different class of competition that they have faced. Quarte's jab numbers, however, are important because he has a thunderous jab. It's the equivalent of a lot of other people's power punches. Rules of the bout with our ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Ike Corte Ralph Tiger Jones fight is scheduled for 12 rounds. There is no standing eight count, but the three knockdown rule is in effect. Only the referee can stop the fight, and you can be saved by the bell in the 12th and final round only. Jim. Let's go up to Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the Las Vegas Hilton, where tonight, main events in association with 
your undisputed, undefeated king of beers, Budweiser. This Bud's for you. Present 12 rounds of boxing for the WBA Welterweight Championship of the World. This bout is sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission and by the World Boxing Association. WBA President Gilberto Mendoza, supervisor at ringside, is Murray Sleep. The three judges scoring this bout on a 10-point must system are Bill Graham, Hank Myers, and Julio Roldan. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, working for the 91st time in a world title bout, is Joe Cortez. Supposed to be here. And now, ladies you and gentlemen, introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black, trimmed with red, and weighing 147 pounds. His professional record, 30 victories, 22 by knockout, with only one loss. From Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, here is the challenger, Ralph Tiger Jones! Take that and his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing red, gold, and green, and weighing 146 and one half pounds. His professional record, a perfect 33 consecutive victories without a loss, 28 by knockout. Represented by AB stars of Paris, France, he comes to us from Accra, Ghana, Africa, presenting the undefeated WBA welterweight champion of the world, Ike Bazooka Kote. All right, gentlemen. We went over the rules in a dressing room. I want a good, clean fight. Protect yourselves at all times. Keep those punches up. Give me good sportsmanlike conduct. Is that understood? Shake hands, good luck to both. Ralph Tiger Jones is the namesake of a very, very well-known fighter, a middleweight, back in the 50s, who pe appeared very often on the Friday night fights of that era and pulled off a famous upset of uh, Sugar Ray Robinson in one of Robinson's comebacks. All we can hope for is just a little bit of that Tiger Jones, because if uh, this Tiger Jones isn't right, that good, he will be outclassed. And across the ring, you get your first look at Tiger Jones in the black trunks. You notice muscular, well-developed upper body, very thin legs. That could be trouble against Quarte's punching power. And you might have heard trainer Pat Burns a little bit earlier in the ring saying to his fighter, you belong here. You deserve to be here. Obviously attempting to convince Jones not to be overwhelmed by the occasion. There's the excellent chair by Ike Quartier early in the fight. I think Tiger Jones will get a lot of this. And Tiger seems a little tense so far in the fight. Yeah. The job for him is to get through those punches to the body where he likes to work. Tiger Jones sort of pawing with the jab, trying to find something that he can launch in the face of Quarte's early assault, which has been mostly left jabs and a couple of straight right hands. Tiger's not a powerful guy, so I don't know why he's rushing in here to meet the power from Ike Quarte. This doesn't seem like a good tactic to me. Well, his fight plan, Roy, is to try to stay inside of Quarte's power. According to what trainer Pat Burns wants him to do, he's going to have to convince himself to step up and stay in Quarte's chest, and that's not an easy thing to do. You don't want to be in Cortez's chest. That's where Cortez is strong. He's punched off right there in his chest. Cortez is a very strong guy. He's very powerful. He outweighs his opponent by 11 pounds right now. Why would you go try to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe or get in his chest, as they would say? You well, think you got a recipe for an early knockout? That's what it looks like to me. Well, you got to dance with what brung you, and if this is the style that got him to this point, I don't know that he's capable of changing it. I don't know. I've seen Florida change their strategy against Florida State from the first time to the second time. Jones's legs wobbly as Quarte chases him across the ring. Minute and a half still to go in the round. Tiger Jones unable to throw much and seemingly on wobbly legs as Quarte presses the attack behind the jab and the straight right hand like that. This fight shouldn't last too much longer. I think it's a very good finisher. And the Tiger one, is in deep trouble. The one thing he isn't doing is going to the body, though, Roy. This is a place where he should be going to the body. There it is. him up. Right there was the first good shot to the body. Right, 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 
Well, I don't know if he can get, his, his trainer said he's got to get through four of these rounds. I don't know that anybody could. No, I don't think many people could get through four of these rounds. Well, certainly not standing there in the corner and taking it. He's going to have to try to get his legs back under him. That was another body shot, Larry. Yeah, good straight. Oh, there he goes. First knockdown of the fight. Tiger Jones just taking way too much punishment for his legs to stay under him. Six. Seven. And you'll see if Quarte can finish in the man. next 30 seconds and get credit for the first round knockout that he would dearly love to have in the wake of Whitaker De La Hoya. Good body shot that drove Jones back at that point. Now I think you see why those guys don't want to talk about fighting Ike Quarte. Nobody's going out of their way to fight him. Well, I'm Ten not seconds to go in the round. I'm not sure that those other guys couldn't do just as well against uh, this fighter. I'm sure they could. Second knockdown. Four, five, six, seven, eight. I go. I'm pretty sure those other guys right, don't really want none of this guy. Oh, uh, time. And I'll go out and see it. Tiger Jones makes it out of the first round and walks on wobbly legs back to his corner. Quarte got credit for two knockdowns. One thing you, you see here, Larry, is when I tell you about the size differential, when a guy knows how to correctly lose the weight, come in 10 and 12, sometimes 15 pounds heavier than he showed up at the scale, and he does it the right way, it can show to be a big advantage. And that's, this is basically what has happened tonight. And that's why I don't like weigh-ins the day before the fight, because some fighters can use that to their advantage. If the weigh-in had been around noon today, he couldn't have done that. The well, referee, the if referee, he's as good as his word, Pat Burns, the manager or the trainer, should be stepping out of the corner to stop, stop this pretty fight. soon. The referee's going to stop it soon. Tiger hasn't thrown a whole one punch this round. Now there he throws a right hand after he stuck a jab, and he tries a couple more. He's not getting anything out of it. I guess Pat Burns, the trainer, has seen enough to let it go for a little while longer. practice in rounds one and two for Ike Forte of Ghana. Too easy. Just too easy. We're trying to... They're yelling from Tiger Jones' corner that Corte is tired, but I don't see it yet. There was a hard right hand shot by Corte. Jones wobbling again. A minute and a half to go in the second round. You wonder how much more Joe Cortez wants to see. Well, it's about 1.20 in the morning in Accra, in Ghana. And people don't see Wolves be staying up too late there tonight. <laughs> well, now here's some brave stuff from Tiger Jones, who has found an opportunity to start getting his own punches off and is doing the best he can. And if he lands some body shots, he may have a chance that he can wear, wear out down just a little bit. himself just enough to stay upright in round two. It's going to be another 100-plus punch round for Quarte. But Pat Burns insisted to us that if Jones could just survive the first four rounds, he would come on strong in the latter stages of the fight. And it's going to take a hell of an act of will to do that. And he may have that will inside of him somewhere. And it looks like we will soon find out. Quarte slowing down perceptibly as round two comes to a close and Tiger's still in there. Good right hand over the top of the jab by Ike Forte. 
Uh, oh, he's a, he, you know, he is a very strong puncher, it seems to me, Roy, but not a, what I would call a power puncher. Well, he's pretty powerful because of the speed that's on his punch. The only thing here is it seems as though he's not really mentally into this fight like he would be if he were fighting somebody that was supposed to be really a threat to him. You always can tell by the sparkle in the guy's eyes, the way that they come to the ring, the way that they bounce around when they end up in the pre-fight warm-up. When he fought Vince Phillips, for example, he was much more crisper in the pre-fight bounce around than he was tonight. Well, how could he not be super motivated tonight? I mean, this is his showcase on national television at home in Ghana, one week after Whitaker De La Hoya, his chance to make his statement that he is, as so many people claim he is, the best welterweight in the world. How could he not be motivated tonight? Well, when you fight a guy like Tiger Jones, who's not supposed to be of that caliber of a Whitaker and a De La Hoya, he feels as though no matter how good he looks against Tiger, they're going to say, well, that's not Whitaker or that's not De La Hoya. So, I mean, he's motivated enough to do his job, I think, but he's just not as crisp and as sharp as he would be if he were fighting one of the big boys. I know for a fact because I'm looking at it and I can tell he's a lot more flat on his feet than he normally is. And it's not because he wants to knock Tiger out or he's trying to hit harder. It's just that this is what he's choosing to do. Does he always have that little smile on his lips, even in the gym? Always. It's like he knows something. He knows how strong he is. That's right. He knows he how good he is. And he knows he has a lot down inside when it comes down to it. When you're a nice guy, as Quarte is, is it impossible not to have a little sympathy for the opponent when it's target practice the way it was in the first two rounds? No, it's not impossible. He probably could have a little bit of sympathy. Good right hand shot by Jones, his best punch of the of the fight. Jones is really trying hard to win this fight. Don't make no mistake about it. Well, you heard Pat, bon uh, Pat Burns say, you're fighting on balls and heart, and he's got no shortage of both commodities. Right, he's doing a very good job on heart and balls right now. I was fighting very smart, he's fighting conservative, he's not wasting too many punches, everything he's throwing is short, right in front of him because this is where Tiger Jones is. He's throwing not too many wild punches, he's throwing right down the pipe where Tiger is. The only thing is, like Larry said earlier, he should go to the body a little bit more. And if Jones wants Quarte to punch himself out in the early stages of the fight, well the good news is, by CompuBox statistics, Quarte threw 245 punches in the first two rounds. That's a lot of work. And he's still throwing a lot of them right now as we speak. And I have another 100-plus punch round. But Jones is no longer on wobbly legs. No, and he's throwing some pretty good punches. Marte still with that little grin on his face. As he fires back at Tiger Jones with left and right combinations. A look at Marco Antonio Barrera in his dressing room as he prepares to try to avenge the only loss of his career against the man who knocked him out last November, Brooklyn's Junior Jones. Incidentally, when we go to Ike Quarte's corner where they speak the Ga language of Quarte's tribe, our interpreter is Fred Asifo. Stick to the body punches, okay? And then double the jabs. Start from the mid section all the way up. Take your time. He seems to want to go the full length of the fight, okay? So just stick to the body punches. Take your time. Take your time. His ass is tired. Come on, His ass ought to be tired. His ass is averaging 113 punches per round through the first three rounds. Anybody's ass would be tired. <laughs> Well, right now, Jones is thinking, they told me all I've got to do is get through four rounds, and then I can start to fight. He just got one more of these to get through. Can he make it? I think he'll make it because Ike is content with just hitting him at will, hitting him more than he's hitting Ike, and fighting a good tactical fight here. Well, you saw Jones celebrating ecstatically at the end of round three and even taunting Forte that he had made it that far. Forte, of course, smiled at him. <laughs> I tell you, Forte is a very soft-spoken guy. Doesn't get into the jive talking and stuff like that. He means business, he comes to do business. 
And Tiger does mean upset, and he's here to upset uh, Bazooka tonight if he can. You think they know Jive and Acra? <laughs> <laughs> Orte standing his ground against a man who wants to lean in against his chest. Orte firing short punches and generally landing about two or three blows to every blow landed by Tiger Jones. But Tiger Jones's game plan still at this moment is simply to survive and try to get to the later rounds. And if that precipitous weight gain, 14 pounds in the last 27 hours, is going to hurt Quarte at all, it would hurt him in the later rounds. Yes, it would, but that was a good right hand by Tiger Jones. He's not throwing many punches, but he's trying to make everything that he throws count. Pat Burns said when Jones came to him four weeks ago, basically all he had going for him was that he had done some road work. He made Jones spar three times a day to get ready for this bout. I guess that's why this must seem like a walk in the park for him. Some park. <laughs> is one thing going in against an Ike Quarte is yet another but you can see Jones's confidence building as he starts to use some head movement to try to get away from Quarte's constant assault and he's backing Quarte up now something he couldn't conceivably have done in round one not because Ike was much too strong much too big for him I'll tell you about 10 minutes ago I would have been sure by now we would have been up on our feet talking about the upcoming fight between Jones and Barrera. Double right hand by Quarte. Another combination from Quarte backs Tiger Jones up. Oh. Another interesting thing you have to look at with Tiger Jones here is that he's out to prove a point tonight. He's out to also prove to his former trainer that just because you start spending your time with Mike Tyson doesn't mean that you lost or that you're gaining a better fighter. He wants to show his former trainer that he is just as good of an opponent, I mean a champion, as any other guy. Indeed, his manager acknowledged that they would be sending a paycheck to Rich Giacchetti, but they don't feel all that good about it. Harold, how do you have it scored through four? Jim, an easy fight to score. Four rounds to nothing, 40 to 34. Ike Corte, he gets two extra points for the two knockdowns in round one. Jim, I got to talk about three important things. Number one, the second knockdown of the first round occurred after the 10 second warning. So, in other words, Ralph Tiger Jones was on the floor after three minutes had transpired. In Nevada, they don't ring the bell at three minutes, they ring the bell when the fighter gets up. You follow? And second point, he, uh, Ike Corte doesn't step with the punch, and I think Roy can comment on that. He throws the jab, he doesn't step with it. Third thing, the weight of Ike Corte, Larry commented on it, it was rampant that the way in that he was 150 all week. More left-right combinations by Corte. Jones in more trouble than ever before. And okay, Joe come Cortez back. is going to stop it. And he won't no, come no, back no, from that. That's, that's it, my man. Oh, that's it, that's it right oh, there. Those last two down. left right combinations were as perfect as perfect can be. Let me show you how you tell a good fighter. He knew what Tiger was doing. He let Tiger last his four rounds to see that four rounds wasn't going to help. He waited till the four rounds was over. He came out the fifth round and immediately started on Tiger's body. That's how you wear a fighter down and take him out. Well, that was the textbook case of finishing his man by Ike Quarte in the fifth round. And all credit to Tiger Jones for the brave effort. But in reality, he didn't have the goods to match up against a fighter like Ike Quarte. No way, and plus he was too small. So Quarte makes his statement. Six days after Whitaker De La Hoya, the big fight in the welterweight division, and here's Joe Cortez as he humanely called a halt to it. There's the first left-right combination. There's the second. And all four of those punches landed. Beautiful punches by Ike. That was a little uppercut. That really hurt 
Tiger Jones. Now, what about uh, Harold Letterman's mild criticism that Quarte doesn't step in behind his punch? Well, he's never been a guy to commit much to his jab. He inches close to the guy with his feet first. Then, when he's in range, he fires the jab. Therefore, he will not shoot the jab when he's out of range. So there's no need for him to step when he does shoot the jab. You like it? Yeah, I like it. If it works, I'll love it. <laughs> Let's get the official particulars on Quarte's KO victory from Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Joe Cortez has to step in and call a halt to the bout. The official time, one minute, eight seconds of round number five. The winner by TKO victory and still the undefeated WBA welterweight champion of the world, Ike, Ike Bazooka Cortez. And there's Junior Jones. Brooklyn product, one-time rising superstar in the sport, had his career progress halted in 1994 when he lost two out of three fights. Suddenly, the John Michael Johnson and Daryl Pinckney revived his star status with last fall's win over Barrera and can solidify it again with a victory in the rematch tonight.